factorizing and jigsaw puzzles. Now it's probably not two things you would normally put together, but in fact they do go together and I'll show you how after the intro. Hi, my name's Tom Moore and in this video we're going to explore how to factorize using a model. Now, factorising is quite often something that students don't understand because it requires a really good understanding of something quite abstract, being algebra, but also multiplicative thinking, and then bringing those two things together. In this video, we're going to explore how to use a model in order to be able to teach factorising. But we're going to use a model that we've already seen in previous videos. And to be able to understand how this model works, I highly recommend that you check out the video on expanding using algebra arrays. Make sure you go and do that before you go on and watch any further. Now if we remember back to the model that we used during the algebra arrays where we looked at how to expand algebraic equations, well we had a number of different pieces, that is we had a y, a 1, an x, an x squared, a y squared and also an xy. And the other thing that we had to remember was that if we flip this over, the x would then become a negative x as well because that's going to help us out later on throughout this video. Now when we went through and we did this to be able to expand, what we found was that if I had 4 multiplied by x plus 3, well all I needed to do was align these up. So you would have 1 and an x which would be an x. And you simply just align the pieces up to make sure that they all fitted in nicely like that to make an array. Now if you have a think about this, the question was always on the outside of these lines, that is 4 multiplied by x plus 3. And my answer always came on the inside, that is 4x plus 12. Then the same thing for this one, if I had x plus 2 and x plus 3 and I multiplied them together, well I got x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let's have a think about what the answers look like. In fact, in every single example, the answer always came out as a rectangle. And that's interesting because we're going to use this idea of a rectangle to be able to help us to factorise quadratic equations and also linear equations as well. Let's start out with say the question 4x plus 8 and we need to make a rectangle out of this in order to be able to factorise it. Well first of all I need to get 4x's and then I need to get 8. Now in order to factorise it I just simply need to rearrange these to make a rectangle. I'll show you what I mean. There we go, I've rearranged 4x plus 8 to make a rectangle. Now, what does that mean in terms of how to factorise it? Well, this here is where my answer once was. But we're now going to start with the answer and work backwards. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to think about what will go on the outside that would have given me 4x plus 8. Well, to do that, I can see here that this one here would have to be a 1 because it's the height of a 1. And it's going to be the same for the rest of these going up here as well. And what's going to go here? Well, it's going to be a width of x and then a width of 1 and another width of 1. So I just simply get my x and my two 1s. Therefore, when I factorise 4x plus 8, I end up getting 4 multiplied by x plus 2. And as you can see, the rearranging it into a rectangle really does help in order to figure out what goes on the outside. Let's try another example. Maybe 9 minus 6x. Well, I need to get 9 to start off with. And then negative 6x. And once again, I just need to rearrange these to make a rectangle. Let's see what we can come up with. So as you can see here, I've got my 9 minus 6x, and therefore, what's going to go on the outside? Well, I need to have a look. As you can see here, I've got a height of three ones, don't I? So I can just simply put those in. And what's going to go here? Well, there's a width of three ones. And for this part, what's well, going to be a width of x, isn't it? So I can just grab these. Now there's a slight issue with what I've just done though, because if I have a look, this one here and this one here are the same colour, but I need it to be different colours. Well, if I flip this over and this over, well they're different colours, so that works because that's a different colour, 
And these ones here, they're the same color, so therefore that's the same color and that works. So when I go through and factorize 9 minus 6x, well that gets me 3 multiplied by 3 minus 2x. And there you have it. You can see once again that rearranging into a rectangle to find out what will go out on the outside really helps out with factorizing. Now you may find that when students go through and factorize that they might actually look at some of this and maybe think that there's three of those that kind of looks like an X. And what I always tell students is imagine you had a knife and you chopped it down along here like that. Does it cross over the X? Because if it does, it doesn't quite work. What should happen is you should be able to make chops going all the way along so that it's nice and neatly organized. So therefore it quite obviously becomes the three here. And that will work a lot better with chopping it down there like that. Or maybe you could even come up with your own analogy that you could use with your students. Now what about dealing with quadratics? I wonder if the same model will work for that. Let's have a look at x squared plus 5x plus 6 and see if we can factorise that using the model. Well I'm going to grab an x squared, I need to have 5x's and also 6. And once again, I need to rearrange these to make a rectangle. Let's see how we go. Excellent, so I've managed to rearrange x squared plus 5x plus 6 to make a rectangle. Now, let's see what goes on the outside. Well, it's going to be an x plus 2 here. And then it's going to be an x plus 3 here. And we'll just quickly check with our chop method, does it actually work? Well if I do a chop going up every single way there, that works. And also coming down here like that, that also works. So we know that we're in fact correct. So therefore when I factorise x squared plus 5x plus 6, I end up getting x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. Now once you've done a number of these, both linear and then looking at some quadratics with positive numbers, you can then look at quadratics involving negative numbers. Let's have a look at how to do this. Let's say for example that I have x squared plus 3x minus 4. Let's have a think about what this might look like. Well I'll remove all of these and I need to have x squared plus 3x and then minus 4. Alright, I now need to rearrange these to make a rectangle. So I'm going to have my x squared and that works there. I might put this one here and just see how we go. Hmm, that doesn't quite work does it? Because I don't quite make a rectangle. Maybe I could do this. Also it doesn't work because that doesn't fit there. What could I possibly do? Well, I can actually bring in what we call a zero. And that is where I have an x and a negative x. Because if you think back to the previous video where they combined and disappeared, well now we're going to use this. We're going to bring them back together and put them in here like this. And now we have a rectangle. So I've got an x and four and an x and one. So x, and 4 and x but because it's a different colour although because this is white it means that this must also be white because this is black so therefore I've got x plus 4 and I'm multiplying it by x minus 1 and that will actually get me x squared plus 3x minus 4 because if we think about it these two would combine and disappear, x squared plus 3x minus 4. It still works. And we can just double check it using the chop rule once again, chop, 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 chop. In all directions it will work as well. So therefore we know that we've factorised it correctly. Now there will be times where you actually cannot make a rectangle in order to be able to factorise. And that's when we'd use things like completing the square. 
And completing the square is actually doing just that. It's making a square by bringing in other pieces. Also, there's times where you'd use the quadratic formula, and that's something you would address later on down the track, which is essentially something that comes from completing the square. Now, before we get students to even factorise using this model, it's really important that we make sure that they've actually understood how to expand using the model first. That is, they can have a look at this and they know that when I have 3 multiplied by x plus 2, that they're going to grab the pieces and place them down like this so you can see it gets 3x plus 6. Because once they understand how to use this model, all they really need to know is two things. That is, when factorising, it's like starting with the answer and we need to work backwards to figure out what goes on the outside. And then the second thing is, the answer always forms a rectangle. So it's just like a jigsaw puzzle really. That is, they need to grab the pieces, the answer, rearrange it to make a rectangle, and once they've done that, they can figure out very easily what the original numbers and algebraic terms would have been. And it's from the understanding of this model that it will actually allow you to teach factorising in around about 20 seconds. Like I said, all you need to do is point out that it's a rectangle and you start off with the answer and work backwards and students can simply play around with it and go from there. And as they do that, encourage them once again to look for patterns between what they come up with as an answer to what they actually had at the beginning. Now one last thing to consider is that I've gone through this activity at a rapid pace for you so that you can just see how far you can take it. When working with students, you will really need to slow it down and give them plenty of opportunities to go through and practice each stage at a time. That is, focus on factorising linear equations first of all, then start to look at how to do it with negative numbers and negative algebraic terms before eventually going on to factorising quadratic expressions both with positive and then negative terms. It's this scaffolding that will give them the opportunity to experience success and also look for patterns in what they're doing. Now don't forget to like, comment and share this video with a colleague. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the videos that we're putting out. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.